number one gives us a histogram with 94 data points and then it wants us to figure out what proportion of the data is in each interval that they give us. So when you look at a histogram, they give you an interval and then this um, vertical axis tells you how many data points there are in that interval. So if we look at this one, it says it wants us to look between 47 and 48. So here's the interval it's talking about. And if we go over here, there's three data points there. So then this is three data points out of 94. And then you could just divide these in your calculator to get um, 0 0.0319 if you wanted to, um, or you could leave it as the fraction. Um, second one says 50 to 51, so we're right here. So if we go up here and go over, that's six out of 94 data points are there. Divide in your calculator and you'll get 0 0.0638. And then the last one is from 53 to 54, so then that's way up here, and that's 12 data points out of 94. And when we divide that in our calculator, we get 0.1277. Number two, the relative frequency of a histogram shows the distribution of average daily temperatures in degrees Fahrenheit for a town over the course of five years. Match each temperature interval with the proportion of days um, over the five years whose average temperature fell in that interval. Um, and so we're obviously matching. This first data set says that we're going to go from 0 to 66. So we would need to add up all of these data points in, in each of these intervals. So we'd have to add this number, this number, this number, this one, and this one um, to get that. So I'm just going to actually wait and see on that one. So I'm going to look at the rest of them and kind of narrow down my options. So 66 to 68 is here. Okay, so we want to add this number, so about 0.12 and a little over 0.8. So 0.12 and 0.08 would be about 0.2. So if we look in our options, okay, that would be number four. So this B is going with number four. Um, then, Let's see, um, 68 to 70, so now we're here. So 68 to 70 are these two. So this one looks like maybe 0.13, and this is like 0.15. And I'm just guessing um, so that I can match it to something close. So 0.15 and 0.13 is 0.28. So then look down the line at these. So the only option that's around that is 0.291. So C is number five. Um, then if we take a look at 70 to 71, so that's just one data point. So right here, close to 0.1. Um, and so we've got 0.1. So this one's probably number two. Then if we take a look at um, 73 to 74, so this interval, and we go over, um, we're about 0 .2, 0 0.02 or a little bit um, like right around that. So a little bit more than 0 0.02, between 0 0.02 and 0 0.04. So that looks like number one. So then that leaves um, for that initial data point that I just kind of skipped because it was too many things to be adding together. So that leaves number three um, for this first one. Number three, two curves representing a normal distribution are shown. Does the solid curve or dashed curve have a greater standard deviation? And standard deviation is like the width of the curve because it's how spread out the data is. So then that's going to give you the width. So the greater width is going to be um, the one with a greater standard deviation. So in this case, the dotted because it's wider. Number four, here are two distributions. How does the mean of set A compare to the mean of set B and explain your reasoning? Um, so when we look at this, you can see like this kind of middle set of the data looks to be exactly the same. So we've got 
you know, five dots with three, the same number of dots with four, five, six, seven, and so on. And so kind of the only point that's different is the one and the nine. So this one is going to pull your mean lower because it's going to give you a lower total. So you have the same number of dots, but a lower total. And here you're going to have a higher total because you have a nine versus an eight and that's gonna give you a higher mean. So when we compare set A to set B, so we would say, you can say it a couple different ways, but set A has a lower mean than set B because the only data point that is different in the two sets is the one and the nine. So A, would have a lower total causing a lower mean or something similar to that. Number five, which distribution is symmetric? So remember symmetric is equal um, from kind of side to side. So you're looking at like a line of symmetry for the data. So if we look kind of in the middle here, this side is higher than that side. Um, so that's not symmetric. If you look here, it appears that there's a middle in this one, right? So we have two um, dots, one away, three dots here, then two, then one. So B is symmetric. The others, no. Number six, Claire's designing an experimental study. She says that it's important to randomly assign people to random groups in an experimental study because this helps reduce the likelihood of grouping subjects into groups that may differ on some characteristics. Do you agree with her? So yes. Now you don't have to have random groups in, ex in an experimental study, but it obviously helps um, create the least amount of bias. So if you, you know, put all of one characteristic in one group and none in the next, you might get different data. That characteristic or those differences might have impacted the study. So you want to keep um, the differences um, in each group um, so that they are not skewing the data or biasing the data.